So previously, we talked about how to categorize the matter that surrounds us. And we talked about how we could categorize it as atoms, molecules, or ions. And so atoms, molecules, or ions tells us what is the smallest bit that still has those properties, like, like a piece of chalk. Chalk is made up of molecules, right? And so what's the smallest bit that is still chalk? And that's a molecule. Something like baking soda is made up of ions. What's the smallest bit that still has the properties of baking soda? Well, that's ions. Uh, you know, argon is a noble gas. What's the smallest bit that still has properties of argon? An atom, right? So previously we talked about ions, molecules, atoms. That's one way to sort of organize matter in our brains. But another way to organize it is in terms of element compound mixture. So this presents a slightly different way to organize matter. So elements, compounds, mixture. First of all, let's just check for prior understanding. Which of the following is an element? Pause the video, give it some thought. Okay, hopefully you said that all of these are elements. How can we tell? Because they're all only made of one kind of atom. So iron, neon, gold, right? Each of those, they don't... They're just all by themselves. They're not formed compounds with other atoms. It's all just iron, neon, gold. That makes them elements. How about these? Which of these is an element? Hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, water, possibly A and B, or none of the above. The correct answer here is A and B. So both of those are elements because they're only made of a single type of atom. So that's what an element is. It's some substance that only consists of a single type of atom. Now hydrogen gas is a molecule. Oxygen gas is a molecule. Water is a molecule, but it's a compound. Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are molecules, but they're elements. So just because something's a molecule doesn't make it a compound. That's a, a uh, misconception that many students have in this class. An element is only made of a single type of atom. Okay, so elements, again, have a single type of atom. Here are some examples. Iron, neon, oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas. Remember that these are called diatomic molecules. Diatomic, meaning two of the same kind of atom, makes the molecule. Um, so just because they have more than one atom doesn't make them not an element. They can be an element with more than one atom. It just has to be all the same type. And it is a pure substance. What do I mean by that? I mean that if I have a container of hydrogen, then it's hydrogen everywhere in there. It's a pure substance. Um, you'll see more what that means as we go through and we talk about how this works with compounds and mixtures. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about compounds. If an element is just one type of atom, well, what's a compound? Which of these are compounds? Hopefully you chose B. A and B are compounds. C is an element, right? So C is an element because it's only made of one type of atom. A and B are compounds because they're made of more than one type of atom. As previously discussed, table salt is an ionic compound because it's made of a metal and a non-metal. Whereas water is a molecular compound held together with covalent bonds because it's made of only non-metals. So here we see a molecular compound, a ionic compound, and an element, a diatomic molecule. Okay, how about mixtures? How are compounds different from mixtures? Well, which of those is a mixture? Hmm. Hopefully you chose all of the above. They are all mixtures. Salt water is a mixture of salt and water. Air is a mixture of O, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, a whole bunch of different things that make up the air we breathe. But the air we breathe is a mixture. And 18 karat gold is also a mixture. It turns out, this is something I didn't know until I started teaching this class, and that is that carrots, with a big K, 
stand, it's, a, it's actually a fraction. It's out of 24. So 24 karat gold is pure carat, is pure gold. 18 karat gold, that means that it is 18 24 gold. So a carat is a 24th. So 18 karat gold is 18 uh, 24 gold. Typically for yellow gold, the other six 24ths would be silver and copper, um, typically silver and nickel if you're looking at white gold. Okay, at any rate, the point is that all three of these are mixtures. And I guess part of why I picked these three is because when we hear the word mixture, we think of a liquid, right? But certainly a mixture can be a liquid, but it could also be a gas, and it can also be a solid. So how are compounds different from mixtures? Compounds are when atoms are chemically bonded together, when different, different types of atoms, I should say, are chemically bonded together. Whereas a mixture is when they are physically mixed together. So for example, water, H2O, that's the, this is the, the molecular formula for water here, right? Water is a compound. It's hydrogen and oxygen that are chemically bonded together. The hydrogens and the oxygens, they're held together with covalent bonds. And so it has properties that are all its own. It's not a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, right? Water isn't kind of like hydrogen and kind of like oxygen. No, water is its own unique substance. And so a compound is not a mixture of atoms. It is a chemically bond, it is different types of atoms that are chemically bonded together. So here's some examples of some different compounds. H2O is made of all nonmetals. It's a molecular compound. CO2, carbon dioxide, made of all nonmetals. It is also a molecular compound. NaCl, table salt, is made of a metal and a nonmetal, so it is an ionic compound. This guy right here, this is glucose. It is a molecular compound. We'll talk a little bit more about glucose uh, next week. Okay, so a good a compound contains two or more types of atoms. And atoms in a compound are chemically bonded together. They're not just physically mixed. And it is a single pure substance. Okay, so this is another, another phrase we've used, right? So this means that if I've got a cup of pure water, a single pure substance, it means it's water all the way through, right? I don't have like a little corner of hydrogen and a little corner of oxygen, and together it all makes water. No, I've got H2O here, H2O here, everywhere H2O, right? And so that's what it means when it's a single pure substance. It's not a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, it's water all throughout. Again, what's the smallest bit that is still water? It's a molecule, right? So we see how the classification of atom, molecule, ion, and element, compound, mixture, they sort of overlap a little bit, right? Okay, so that's what a compound is. Whereas a mixture are atoms that are two or more substances that are physically mixed together. So saline solution, otherwise known as salt water, is salt and water. And so it's not a pure substance because it's, phys it's different substances physically mixed together. I've got a little bit of salt, I've got a little bit of water, I've got some salt, I've got some water. That makes it salt water, right? Air is also not a pure substance. It's nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, a lot of other gases, water vapor, right? And it's all just physically mixed together. I've got a nitrogen molecule, and then an oxygen molecule, and then a water molecule, and then a, et cetera. And so it's not a pure substance. It's not the same all the way throughout. Even if it's evenly mixed together, it's still not a pure substance because it's made up of multiple different types of substances mixed together. Same thing with 18 karat gold. It's gold, silver, and copper, again, that's for yellow gold, typically gold, silver, and nickel for white gold. And, and again, it's, even if it's uniformly mixed together, it's still got a gold atom and a silver atom and a copper atom and then some more gold atoms and then silver and a copper, right? And so it, it's not a pure substance. It is different substances physically mixed together. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Which of these is a mixture? A pizza? A bag of trail mix? Sugar, just A and B, or all of the above? Hopefully you chose A and B, right? Uh, this is called trail mix, so that's a pretty good clue that that's a mixture. 
Uh, pizza is a mixture of what? Dough and sauce and cheese, other delicious things. Sugar, however, is not a mixture, right? Sugar is a molecule. It is a single pure substance, right? Sugar isn't kind of a combination of carbon and kind of hydrogen and kind of oxygen, right? It is a single pure substance. It's a new thing, right? It's, it's, uh, sugar is a molecular compound. It is not a mixture of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And that brings up another point here, uh, one of the most important points, uh, and I've made it in other, in other places here, and that is that the properties of a compound are not just some combination of the properties of the constituent molecules of that compound, right? Sugar has properties that are completely different than carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And I can combine carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to make alcohol, or to make methanol, which is poisonous, or to make sugar, or to make fructose, or to make glucose, to make all kinds of different things uh, with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And all of those different compounds have different properties that are not just some combination of the properties of carbon, the properties of hydrogen, and the properties of oxygen. How about this? Apple juice is what kind of a mixture? So I, I bet most of you have learned this in some other class. A homogeneous mixture, a heterogeneous mixture, or do we not have enough info? Well, hopefully you said it was a homogeneous mixture. And remember that a homogeneous mixture means same throughout. But what is apple juice? Oh, it's some, some little bit of fructose probably, um, and certainly some water and some other stuff. There's some little apple bits in there probably, right? And so, but to, to be clear, a homogeneous mixture is not a pure substance, right? Because I've still got a little bit of sugar, I got a little bit of water, I got a little chunk of apple, and even if that's all purely mixed together, right? Even if it's all well mixed together, I should say, it's not a pure substance. It's a homogeneous mixture. So a homogeneous mixture is not the same as a pure substance. Again, homogeneous means the same throughout, and heterogeneous means not the same throughout. Here's a burrito. What is a burrito? Is it a homogeneous mixture? A heterogeneous mixture? Delicious. Both B and C, or is there just not enough information to answer this question? Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to think about this. Uh, maybe it depends on whether you've had lunch or not. Clearly B and C. A lot of people just pick B, but burritos really are delicious. Um, so keeping that in mind, um, this is a heterogeneous mixture, certainly, right? Why? Because we've got chunks of steak, chunks of guacamole, some tortilla, and uh, etc. Right? So this is a heterogeneous mixture. Again, that means not the same throughout. What about this? I've got some food coloring. I just dropped it into a glass of water. So right now, in the state that it's in right now, is this a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture? Well, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Why? Because we've got some food coloring here and not some food coloring over here. It is not the same throughout. However, if I give it a stir or just wait around for a long time, then what do I have? Well, now I have a homogeneous mixture. Why? Because now it is the same throughout. Again, though, it's not a pure substance because I've still got some, you know, some dye molecules and some water molecules, and they're all just mixed together. Another point to make here is that, you know, the difference between this picture here and this picture is just a little bit of time, right? And so, you know, whether something is a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture, it can depend on how long we wait, how well it's stirred. And to a certain extent, it can depend on how much we've zoomed in, too, right? We could throw that burrito in a blender with a little water, hit go, and it might look like a homogeneous mixture after a little while. Right? But if we really zoomed in, we'd start to see chunks of meat and chunks of tomato and whatever. Right? So a homogeneous versus heterogeneous, it can kind of depend on the scale, how zoomed in you are, and also how long you wait. But this basic idea of homogeneous means the same throughout. Heterogeneous means not the same throughout. Okay. Again, here it is in blue and green. Homogeneous means uniform or the same composition throughout the mixture. Heterogeneous means different composition in different parts of the mixture. All right, so let's summarize what we've learned about elements, compounds, and mixtures. An element has one type of atom. 
It's just one substance, and it is pure all the way through. A compound, though, has at least two types of atoms. But it's still just one substance, which is pure throughout. Right? A good example is water. It's not a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. It is a new substance. But it's a compound because it contains two different types of atoms. And a mixture has at least two different types of atoms, at least two different types of substances, and it is not a pure substance. Uh, in fact, it's a mixture of more than one substance. So here's a zoomed-in view. Let's think about what these things look like uh, on a molecular level. Here is a zoomed-in view. How many pictures below represent elements? Why don't you pause the video and see if you can't pick out which of these represent elements. Okay, hopefully you picked C, 2. And which two are elements? Well, A certainly is, because it's only got one type of atom. But E is also an element, because it's only got one type of atom. It looks like E is made up of molecules, but it is elemental molecules. So it's molecules that are elements, and we've got atoms that are elements. How many represent compounds? Well, pause the video. Let's see. Okay. Compounds. Well, not this one. We just decided. Ooh, this looks like two different types of atoms chemically bonded together. I would say this is a compound and this is a compound. So I see two here that are compounds. Both B and F are compounds. Which leads me to my next question. How many are mixtures? Well... At this point, we've ruled out the uh, elements and the compounds, so we must be left with two mixtures. And indeed, here we've got one mixture, and here we've got another mixture. Right? You can see that these are two different types of atoms, but they're not chemically bonded together. They're mixed. So this is not a pure substance. We've got some of this stuff, whatever it is, and some of this stuff, whatever it is. I would say that this is a homogeneous mixture, and this one is a hetero. Okay, so element, compound, mixture, just a different way of classifying all of the matter that's around us.